I know that uh, most of you will not be aware of me, but for a good number of years I was president of the Europe-wide uh, European Federation of Crohn's and Colitis Association, which included ACU as one of the member associations. And in that role, I became early on involved um, in helping the MetaHIP project get off the ground because we were able also to send a letter of support to the European Commission uh, to uh, tell them how very much we felt that this project was important to the patients with inflammatory bowel disease. I realized that there were other patients from other specialties involved, but we were very keen that inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis, was going to be involved in the project. And I'm delighted to hear the results uh, tonight of, of that study. It's come a long way, and we've seen what has been achieved, and I think what can be achieved in the future. I'm sure there is more money in the uh, European community uh, budgets, and I'm sure that uh, the researchers will be able to take that forward. But I wanted also to share with you tonight um, a couple, three slides um, that I put together really to link in um, the results of a study, the impact of IBD, which has been undertaken by the European Federation of Crohn and Colitis Association, um, and some similar national studies. Because step by step, we are learning more and more from all aspects of research about IBD and uh, where we are going, and uh, hopefully to learn very soon much more about the cure, prevention, um, and uh, to make uh, better treatments for us meanwhile. In addition to my role now in the UK with the Crohn's in Childhood Research Association, of which I'm vice chair, an organization which not only raises money for um, uh, research into a pediatric <coughs> inflammatory bowel disease, but it also provides support and information to young people, the children and their families. Uh, as in the UK, that we have two organizations, uh, one primarily for the adults, and this other organization called KICRA, both of which have been running for about 30 years, although they do cooperate together. That's NAC and KICRA. And so uh, the families uh, and the young patients ask me, when will we find the cause and discover the cure? Because we have to remember that there are more than 1.5 million diagnosed across Europe, and we believe around 5 million worldwide with IBD. And when you think that 40 years ago, it was rare. I can remember 40 years ago, my wife being diagnosed with Crohn's. I've been a carer for more than 40 years. And uh, uh, many of our friends now um, are still uh, looking for that cure. In the UK, uh, we believe about 20% of the 250,000 people diagnosed with IBD are young people under the age of 18 years. I don't know how many there are in Spain, but Manuel was talking about 200,000, I think, as being the numbers with IBD. So probably there would be less than 20% uh, of young people, but nevertheless, that's... Uh, in my mathematics, because I come from a financial background, um, that's about 30,000, 40,000 uh, young people. Uh, so there are a lot of those uh, young children and growing uh, adolescents who are going to have Crohn's disease particularly uh, most of their life, and, unless we can very soon find a, uh, a cause and, and a cure. And so this leads me on to <clears throat> the impact of IBD on patients across Europe, where you'll see that EFCA undertook a study uh, and had results from 6,000 people across 27 countries, uh, an online questionnaire asking them about how inflammatory bowel disease uh, affects their daily lives. And I'm not going to go through all of the details because I know that we all want to adjourn and speak to one another but you can see that about half of the, 
those uh, 6,000 said that they uh, <coughs> described their IBD as chronically active uh, or with pediatric, uh, periodic flares, and about 50% have problems with their joints and a third uh, skin involvement. Uh, staggeringly, of those taking part in the survey, 85% said that they were hospitalized within the past five years, and 40% have had at least one operation. But you have to bear in mind, this is uh, the questionnaire was completed from people right across Europe, from north to south, east, uh, west to east. And so, so a few more results. Uh, work productivity, 75% of patients uh, cancelled or rescheduled their appointments as a result of their crone or colitis, and just more than 60% feel stressed and pressured about taking time off work. I know that you did a local study here in Spain, and I believe that the results were similar than uh, what we see uh, here. You'll see also there's an effect on education and on uh, people's careers, a negative effect 50% indicating that their IBD reduced their educational performance. They didn't achieve uh, the educational performance that they had wished for. And uh, a good number of people, 40%, were affected by their illness and needed to take time off work. And then, of course, we have the issues uh, of relationships with 40% uh, reporting that their IBD prevented a good, uh, good relationships, and 23% uh, caused uh, the ending of intimate relations, and about a third prevented from making or keeping friends due to their IBD. So real social issues relating to uh, the people with Crohn's and colitis. So, as I said earlier, we gave uh, as EFCA gave their support to MetaHIT, and I hope that the patients will be able to support any future studies. Many of the Crohn's and Colitis National Associations across Europe are funding research that they go out on the streets, they raise money, but of course they don't have the large amounts of money that are needed for the MetaHIT type studies of over 20 million euros. But they are uh, raising funds, three, 400,000, uh, euros per year to put into peer-reviewed research in their own countries and sharing research with other countries. And I'm also involved in a very small research foundation uh, which was spun out of the Crohn's and Colitis Association, the European Crohn's and Colitis Association, because a number of uh, the delegates there felt that um, the patients ought to have their own small research foundation and we ought, where possible, to raise money to put into uh, pump priming of small uh, peer review novel IBD studies. And if there is anyone here in Spain, uh, who any doctors and, and nurses and anyone, other specialties, then we will have a call for uh, applications in the next uh, few weeks. And if you go to our website, then uh, you'll see more details of those. And you, uh, as, as people and families with Crohn's and colitis and carers and parents uh, and siblings. Uh, you may be interested in Mary Liz's story from Cyprus, which she agreed to share with us, which you'll see on our IBD research organization site. So that's a selection of uh, six uh, research uh, applications that we pump primed over the last uh, two years. And as I said, there'll be another three or four uh, this year. Uh, but they're fairly wide ranging. Uh, some have been completed. Some uh, have not met their outcomes as expected. But that is sometimes the way with novel research. We don't always find uh, what we think that we're going to. And so just a quick take home message. Um, you'll see there that that study also said that there's a positive benefit from being involved in organizations like the Catalonian uh, Society for Crohn's and Colitis, like ACU, uh, like others within their national organizations across the borders in Europe. And most importantly, I think it's been demonstrated tonight 
that working together is helping to bring positive results as step by step we move towards the cause and the cure and the prevention for Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, uh, which I think will come through more innovative research. And thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you. And I wish you every success.